talking about crying and talking about DJing and talking about being black. <laughs> Have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen this? Bobby Schmurder going crazy in some London club because allegedly he didn't get paid by a promoter and he went absolutely nuts in the club, right? Like threatening to kill people and all that sort of shit. This clip is absolutely incredible. Let me play it for you. Big up the Shade Borough for posting it. Let me play this for you. Oh, Bobby, come here, man. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, brother, come here. 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 Hey, more skirmish in the club, Bobby in the vest, chains on. There's something in the back. Pushing people, shouting at people. So, I completely understand. I completely understand. If this is because of l lack of payment, I completely understand. Being a um, up and coming bedroom amateur DJ myself, I've been in so many situations where I have not been paid. <laughs> and I think some of you out there, guys who play in like bands and stuff, guys who've done open mics, some of you guys and girls out there, you'll know the pain of going to a nightclub, going to a bar where you've been booked somewhere and the promoter refuses to pay you. Sometimes they don't refuse to pay you. Sometimes it's not a refusal. Sometimes they run away from you. Big up my friend Miles, right? This guy Miles, who I used to do this party with called So Special. Big up you wherever you are. Um, it was a very valuable lesson. One time we were doing So Special, we were kind of blowing up in the that part of London at the time and really popular and whatnot. And we somehow got the attention of some big promoter guy in West London and in Soho to be specific. No, no, in, in flipping Leicester Square, that kind of area, right? Like those kind of fancy clubs where they have tables and shit. And they booked us for a gig. They're like, hey, we love your sound. We went to come and play in our party. We should have known it was a bit fishy from the moment, that moment. Because why would some random promoter of a swanky bar in London, in central London, want to get some of us guys in who are from like the dumb, the fucking gritty part of like Dawson to go and party over there? There's no connection between the two places. They just went to obviously use our name, quote unquote, and obviously get the advantage of having our fans or quote unquote, or our party attendees go there as well to kind of bolster the number. So it was mostly it was serving their purposes mostly except to us we discussed payment they were going to agree to pay us i think the money was like a hundred pounds each or something it wasn't anything crazy it was like a hundred pounds each so when you include having to travel there when you include you know maybe your your cab back especially that in that time we were doing it there was no 24-hour tube line so we had to usually get a cab back home because especially i live in like the depths of east london so getting back from central is really long so you know you'd rather get a cab back so when you include all those things after all those costs, you're probably taking home £60, right? That's what you're probably taking back home. £60, if not 50 So it's not even like you're getting paid a lot. We play the gig. It goes well. Um, the, the night itself is a bit shit because who wants to be in a Soho club with tables and stuff? We not really like it, but it was a busy night. It went well. Like It looked like there was a lot of people that turned up there. Then at the end, I'm like, oh, yeah, to Miles. Yeah, let's wait to get our money from so-and-so. And Miles just starts laughing. What do you mean? He's like, why are you laughing? He's like, we're not going to get our money, man. I said, like, no, no, he, he, like, he said we should wait for him and he'll give us the money. He's like, bruv, he's not, he's not going to pay us. I was like, no, no, he's going to pay, he's going to pay us. And half an hour goes, an hour goes by, another hour goes by. I start looking for him and I couldn't find him. And the club is tiny. It's like a Soho club. It's got a couple of levels, but it's like really small and just packed. I was like, where could he be? And I just couldn't find him anywhere. And then obviously later on, I just gave up and just we decided to go home and we had no money. And I was fucking angry. I was so furious. Um, I don't think there's no other pain or there's no other rage like somebody promising you money for services and then not giving you the money. That sort of anger and rage is like, you can't describe it. I went to fight everybody in that fucking club. So I leave and we don't get our money. But then I remember it happening a couple other times after that. And I remember, you know, sharing the story with other people and people saying, yeah, that's like a standard thing. That's what promoters do. I was like, oh, I didn't know this is a thing. So some promoters will do that. They'll just book you for a thing, knowing full well they're not going to pay you. Sometimes they'll look for an excuse. So if you turn up late, they'll just say, hey, you turn up late. That means you've got your fee docked and they'll pay you a certain amount or they'll take the money off your final amount or they just won't pay you at all. So they'll just use you for the fact that, hey, you can play for free. 
you might bring people in which will help them but then they'll keep all the money for themselves or sometimes if they're honest it'll just be because they didn't make enough money at the door or we didn't sell enough tickets we couldn't break even which doesn't happen which is very rare very rarely will you find a really decent promoter who will tell you hey I know I booked you and I promised you a certain amount of money, but I can't pay you because we didn't make enough money on the bar. We didn't make enough money on tickets. That rarely happens. I think that's happened to me once where a promoter's just been honest and said, look, we didn't make any money. But most of the time, promoters just run away and they'll avoid eye contact, they'll avoid, you know, seeing you or they'll keep, or it's that scene in Atlanta. Remember that scene in Atlanta where they're trying to get paid and the guy just keeps like walking away and keeps like, you know, motioning with his hands and stuff. It reminds you of that sort of thing. But the thing that I liked going forward, I think about recently, was Americans. When you see girls doing walkthroughs in clubs, you see a lot of them at the end of the night carrying money, like cash. And I love that because I didn't know that was a thing because it, even me as a small time DJ, some places are playing in, in pubs where they're paying you a hundred pounds, 50 pounds. They'll make you, they'll make you send an in invoice. They won't even pay you cash. They'll make you send an invoice. You know how dumb that is? It's 50 pounds. You can't take that out of the till. You don't have that in petty cash. So I love that in America, for the most part, you guys have a culture of like, no, give me fucking cash. Like even big time people, if they're getting booked somewhere, they want cash only. They don't like, th that's part of their, that's part of their fucking requirements. If you want to book them, you go through their agent, you have it, you know, certain days in advance, you meet all their terms in terms of, you know, arrangement travel things and whatever and part of the arrangement for some people is that i need my money in cash no wire transfer no nothing cash only but that's something that doesn't really happen a lot in the uk people don't really like to pay people in advance in cash in advance in cash or when you get there in cash at all that's why these uh, situations happen so even bobby schmurder way more famous than i am way more clouded up has a name has a reputation right as being a, a bit of a ragamuffin even he is susceptible to get scammed and to get hustled by promoters who basically will book you and then not decide to pay you when you're there and again i don't have you know i completely understand why he felt the way he did wanting to fight everybody in the club and turn that place up like when you go especially when you're at that, his level Yes, it's fun to go to a club. Yes, it's fun to drink. Yes, it's fun to kind of, you know, um, beat down some fucking slaws. But at a, point, at a certain point, it then becomes a job. You know, you're only there because you're there getting paid. You, you probably don't even like traveling to London. So, you know, you're in London now. You don't really like the city. Most Americans don't like London anyway because the food isn't that great. The weed here is a bit shit and overpriced. So you're having to travel to this country on a long flight from New York, 10 hours. You get here and then the person doesn't pay you. It's like, come on, do you know what I mean? Like, do me a fucking favor. So anyway, let's continue and let's hear... Um, let's play a couple more videos where I think he explains it and we get a bit more detail on what actually occurred here. I just want to let you know, yeah, like for future, you. yeah, you shouldn't do this to people. Well, I mean, look, like you can't, you can't hold an event. Now, let me just finish, yeah. You can't hold an event, yeah, and not have money at the end of the night. Exactly. The exactly. It's wrong. Exactly. So, so exactly. Chances, unfortunately, were out of uh, control. But then so. you should not let us know at the end of the night when exactly. you've already done everything exactly you should have told us before the end of the night i, I, I can't tell you i mean I, I, you, you, I, I you can you can like, yeah. at the, the, the beginning of the night there. you should make sure that the money's there stop recording. What are you recording for? because it's proof that you didn't pay him exactly. we're covering our artists exactly because yeah. our artist is now Thank getting you. getting disrespected online Thank like you. he can't good night. he can't do good night. Shows and, stuff. And, and again what do you think it is about promoters that they all like this doesn't matter what country you're in doesn't matter what race you are. Why is it? Why is it? Why is it that the promotion field just draws these certain dickheads, these certain guys with this sort of attitude? Like how? Like look at him. It's his mistake, right? It's his error that leads to Bobby Schmurder freaking out in a club and going crazy. He's the one that fucked up. You should have been able to communicate with his team about the delays in payment. You should have had the money ready. You don't have it ready. And then now he's getting an attitude when the, I guess that's Bobby Schmurder's maybe UK handler, his manager or somebody, including his team, is basically, you know, telling them, hey, you fucked up. He's now getting offended and walking off and being rude. Like, what? what is it about the promotional industry or the promotive field that draws these type of people? Or is it the, or is it the nature of the work that turns you into a dickhead? Or do you just have to be a bit of a dickhead? Or do you have to be a bit of a cunt to work as a promoter? Maybe you have to be a bit of a cunt to work as a promoter. Maybe you have to be a bit up, a bit of an arsehole to be around these people night, day in, no, night after night. It can get probably as exhausting as playing somewhere. But yeah, man, like, you know, Bobby Schmader's not in the wrong here. It's a fucking promoter. Anyway, and then the next video here, we've got another video 
where that features Bobby Schmurder actually explaining what happened. So I want to hear what Yesha say from his own voice because that video wasn't good. Yeah, you know I mean, it's it's like as a person said, it's going to cause reputational damage for Bobby Schmurder because it makes it look like he can't do any business, you can't do business with him, or he's going to freak out. It might be actually his first thing I've seen on video of Bobby freaking out since he got freed. Right, he hasn't really had any, you know gangster bad boy in you know skirmishes he's kind of kept his nose clean he had a bit of a passa passa with um six nine for a bit i think i forgot who else but so far he's kept his head down um he's released some music he's been flying around the world fucking random white women do you know what i mean like he's been loving life so this is kind of bad to have this image out there like he's you know some ragamuffin when he isn't He's just basically trying to defend himself and stick up for himself because he was booked for an event somewhere. Um, he, the, the fee was agreed. The money should have been paid. So let's see what Bobby Schmidt has to say. To all my fans, I apologize for what happened tonight at Club Proud Late. They are <laughs> he doesn't even know the name. I love it. He doesn't even know the name of the club. <laughs> Proud Late. He, <laughs> he doesn't even know the name of it. I fucking love Bobby. The money on time. I came in, I performed. Well, I wasn't supposed to perform in a contract, as you can see. Um, it was just supposed to be a hosting. I came in, I did extra because I love my fans, you know what I mean? Mm. And um, they didn't pay the money. And a certain, um, you know, certain things happened. I apologize to anybody who had to see that or anybody who was hurt in the mix of it. So big up Bobby Schmurder. He got he got his money in the end. That's why he's smiling. That's why he's happy. Getting paid in pounds when you're American must feel so good, especially when it's cash. That stuff is fucking beautiful. So big up Bobby Schmurder. Hopefully he broke off all his employees and his team and they're eating good and living good. And it obviously makes up for the shitty food and the shitty weed we have here in the UK. That's probably the best thing. Good to see. But I completely understand his pain because I've been in situations where you know, I've had promoters run off on me. Like, I'm sure he got, he's got, he got paid thousands. I've had promoters run off on me on hundreds of pounds. <laughs> 50 pounds sometimes, run off. Promoters running off, hiding in club bathrooms and staff rooms from me because they don't want to pay 50 pounds. <laughs> I'm like, look, I paid my fucking two hour set of new disco right i played fucking you know synth pop for four hours can you give me my fucking hundred pounds please so i can go buy a gram on the way home can you do that please <laughs> honestly man i hate fucking promoters and i wish they weren't all like that but for some reason they are all like that i don't know why i don't know why